Good evening, children. Good evening, Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening, children. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's uh, see the proofs uh, to some theorems and uh, we'll learn some axioms. So you can see the title, some axioms and theorems. So axioms are uh, statements uh, which does not have a proof. Axioms are statements which we all will believe and will agree is true, but does not have a proof. A theorem is a statement which can be proved. That's the difference between an axiom and a theorem. Both of them are statements. Both of them are statements. An axiom will be universally accepted. An axiom will be universally accepted, but does not have a proof. While a theorem is a statement which can be proved. Somebody's mic is enabled. Please disable your mic. So that's the difference between uh, an axiom and a theorem. So here, uh, when line M is parallel to line N and a transversal L intersects them, then the relation between the angles thus formed are obtained as axioms and theorems. So the axioms and theorems which we are going to see now are a result of a transversal intersecting two parallel lines. When two parallel lines are intersected by a transversal, we have eight angles formed around the transversal. And uh, you know, pairs of angles are related. Uh, the terms are corresponding angles, alternate angles, co interior angles. So as a result of these relations, oh, we have some axioms and theorems. Now let's see them one by one. Axiom one. OK. If a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then each pair of corresponding angles is equal. We've already worked sums based on these results. We are seeing, seeing the you know, proofs uh, or the, you know, the understanding behind them. We've already used all these uh, theorems and axioms to solve uh, numerical uh, questions. So we are just uh, looking to their uh, proofs now. So if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then each pair of corresponding angles is equal. This axiom is known as corresponding angles axiom. It's like as if this was only first found out by experimenting. You know, when two parallel lines were intersected by a transversal, by measuring, you know, the uh, angles in the, the in this position, corresponding angles position, it was always noticed that these angles are always equal. The angles in the corresponding angles position were always equal. You know, when different uh, sets of parallel lines intersected by a transversal were considered, it was found that the angles in the corresponding angles positions were always equal. That's how this uh, axiom uh, has come up. So this is a result of experimentation. This axiom is a result of experimentation. OK. So this axiom is known as corresponding angles axiom. So you can see the uh, picture there. Uh, two parallel lines M and N uh, intersected by a transversal L. You can see the eight angles formed around the transversal. So here uh, angle one is equal to angle five. So it's it's uh, that's the conclusion after you know performing the experiment many times. That's the conclusion. Angle one was always equal to angle five. The the, the positions. The angle in the position where angle one is was always equal to angle five. And uh, two is equal to six. Angle two is equal to angle six. Angle four is equal to angle eight. Angle three is equal to angle seven. You know this. OK. And axiom two. So see, there is no proof for this. I told you these results. You know, have, have been obtained by experimentation. So it doesn't have a proof as such. That's why it's called an axiom. But we all know it's true. It's true. Even when you, you can do it at home. You draw two lines parallel to each other and take a transversal 
and measure the angles. Use a protractor and measure the angles in the corresponding angles position. You will see that they are equal. You will see that they are equal. So this is an axiom, corresponding angles axiom. So if you say, no, I don't believe, how can I believe you? I will ask you to perform the experiment. I'll say draw, take two parallel lines, take a transversal and measure the angles in the corresponding angles position. And you will see it yourself that those angles are equal. Pairs of angles in the corresponding angles positions are always equal. Then you will also believe me. Then you share that to your friend. Your friend doesn't believe you. You ask your friend to perform this experiment and uh, you know, when uh, the person sees the uh, results, believes it. So like that it is. So this one does not have a proof as such, but all of us now believe is true. Because if you don't believe, you can always perform the experiment and believe it. So corresponding angles, axiom. Axiom two, if a transversal intersects two lines, uh, see here, two lines. If a transversal intersects two lines such that a pair of corresponding angles is equal, then the two lines are parallel to each other. And this one is called the converse of corresponding angles axiom. The first one is the corresponding angles axiom. The second one is the uh, converse of corresponding angles axiom. So what was uh, you know uh, found here? Whenever we take two lines, when we take two lines intersected by a transversal, and supposing one pair of corresponding angles is equal, supposing you know, one pair of corresponding angles is equal. So this angle, this angle is equal to angle one. Supposing I mark this, mark this angle one and two. If angle one is equal to angle two, that is a pair of corresponding angles is equal. Then it was always found that the lines are parallel to each other. Experiment. It was always found that the lines are parallel to each other. When we consider any two lines, when we consider any two lines intersected by a transversal, and uh, we measure the angles in the corresponding angles position. So supposing we measure the, uh, we may use a protractor and measure, uh, oh sorry, this is the converse, right? Okay, so when we have two lines intersected by a transversal, and uh, supposing I mark these angles, angle one and angle two, you know that angle one and angle two are corresponding angles. And when you measure the, uh, you know, when you measure angle one and you find it to be 60 degrees, you measure angle two, that's also 60 degrees. So when angle one is equal to angle two, it was always uh, found that the lines are parallel to each other. So when two lines, when a transversal intersects two lines such that a pair of corresponding angles is equal, then it was always found that the two lines were parallel to each other. So that is the converse of corresponding angles axiom. Now with these two axioms, uh, other theorems were uh, you know, uh, found meaning uh, some statements were made and they were proved with the help of these axioms. So these two don't have a proof. Have been got out of experimentation, corresponding angles axiom and converse of corresponding angles axiom. Now with the help of these two axioms, we have further statements which can be proved as true with the help of these axioms. So see here. Okay, I didn't read this uh, below. So you can see it below the figure children here. <laughs> you can see it here. If a trans if a, a transversal L cuts two lines M and N, two lines M and N such that angle one is equal to angle five, such that angle one is equal to five, or angle two is equal to six, not and or any one pair of corresponding angles is equal. If a line, if a transversal cuts two lines such that any one pair of corresponding angles is equal, then the lines are parallel to each other. So such that angle one is equal to angle five or see that or angle two is equal to six or four is equal to eight, four is equal to eight or three is equal to seven. Then M is parallel to N. Then the two lines are parallel to each other. See the theorem. I'll give you time to write, children. I'll just explain and then uh, I'll love you to write. So if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then each pair of alternate interior angles is equal. You know that. If a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then 
each pair of alternate angles or alternate interior angles is equal. We know that. We will see the proof now. Now this one has a proof. How can this be proved with the help of the corresponding angles axiom or the converse of corresponding angles axiom? All right. Okay. So now, what do you have to take? So you, you this is what you'll have to take. Uh, if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, so you need to consider two parallel lines. So see here, AB parallel to CD, AB parallel to CD, and transversal T, transversal T, cuts AB at E, cuts AB at E and CD at F, CD at F, forming two pairs of alternate interior angles, forming two pairs of alternate interior angles, namely angle 3 and angle 5, angle 4 and angle 6. Now we need to prove that, so that's what we'll have to consider. Now we need to see these are the alternate interior angles, or we need to prove that they're equal. We need to prove that they're equal. So you have to take two parallel lines intersected by a transversal, so the transversal intersects AB at E and the other line CD at F, forming two pairs of alternate interior angles, angle 3 and 5, angle 4 and 6. We need to prove that angle 3 is equal to 5 and 4 is equal to 6. So you can use, uh, you know, the corresponding angles axiom, converse or uh, vertically opposite angles, linear pair, all this can be used. You can use linear pair if needed vertically opposite angles are equal or the axioms which we just saw. Now see here, in order to prove that angle 3 is equal to angle 5, we are going to take the help of some other angle and that is angle 1. Now I'll explain this one. You can do it in a different way also. So that uh, I want you all to come up with. Now uh, to prove that angle 3 is equal, it's very simple. The proof is very, very simple, you know. So to prove that angle 3 is equal to angle 5, we are going to take the help of one more angle. OK, one more angle. So here in this proof, which I have worked, I've taken the help of angle one. All right, to prove that three is equal to five, we're going to take the help of angle one. Now see here, angle, see, we need to prove that three is equal to five. So see here, angle one is equal to three and angle one is equal to five. Why is one equal to three? Because vertically opposite angles are equal. Why is one equal to five? Because corresp corresponding angles are equal. We just saw that axiom, corresponding angles axiom. Because corresponding angles are equal. All right. So from 1 and 2, we get angle 3 is equal to angle 5. That's it. So how do we uh, do it? Uh, to prove that 3 is equal to 5, it uh, took the help of this angle 1. This angle 1. Now 1 is equal to 3. So you have to see here 3 is equal to 5 is here. So there's 1 here. So 1 is equal to 3, 1 is equal to 5. Why 1 is equal to 3? Vertically opposite angles are equal. Why is 1 equal to 5? Because corresponding angles are equal. Why the, why are the, why are the corresponding angles are equal? Because the lines are parallel. Corresponding angles are axiom. All right, so corresponding angles. So 1 is equal to 3, 1 is equal to 5. So from these two, from these two results, we have 3 is equal to 5. We get 3 is equal to 5. So that's the first part. We prove that. Now to prove that 4 is equal to 6, now to prove that 4 is equal to 6, we take the help of another angle. 4 is equal to 6. To prove that 4 is equal to where is 4? To prove that 4 is equal to 6. See, 4 is equal to 6. We take the help of angle 2. We take the help of angle 2. Now we say, see here, 4 is equal to 6. 4 is equal to 6 is here. And this 2. We take the help of angle 2. 4 is equal to 6 is out here. And then that angle 2. We are taking the help of angle 2. Similar to the earlier one. So you just say 2 is equal to 4. See your children, you should know. See, you need to prove that 4 is equal to 6, okay? 4 is equal to 6. We are taking the help of angle 2. We are taking the help of angle 2. Angle 2 is equal to angle 4. Vertically opposite angles are equal. Angle 2 is equal to angle 6. Corresponding angles are equal. So 2 is equal to 4. 2 is equal to 6. That means 4 is equal to 6. It's like A is equal to B and A is equal to C. That means B and C are equal. A is equal to B. Supposing A is 50. So B is also 50. And A is equal to C. So A is 50, right? A is 50. A is equal to B. That means B is 50. A is equal to C. That means C is also 50. So B is 50. C is also 50. So B is equal to C. So if 2 is equal to 4 and 2 is equal to 6, that means 4 is equal to 6. So from 3 and 4, from 3 and 4, angle 4 is equal to angle 6. So hence, we have proved that 3 is equal to 5 and 4 is equal to 6. 
all your children. I'm a little scared now that you might get confused, so I'll just give you time to write. I don't want to keep talking. Uh, as you write, if you have any questions, please ask me. Yeah, let's come from the beginning. Please write down, children. Corresponding angle is axiom and converse of corresponding angle is axiom. They have uh, no proof, but it is true. It's always true, but it is always true. It does not have a proof. That's why it's an axiom. Please write on children. Done, children? Yes, ma'am. Completed, ma'am. Very good. Sir, one minute. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Done, children? One minute. Okay, okay. Yeah, is it over? Yes, ma'am. All right. Yeah. Please take down this. And as you're writing, uh, see if you can, uh, can find another way of proving this using the same idea, but with the help of some other angle. Like here, we have made use of angle one and angle two. Just see if you can use some other angle. Do it in the same way, like vertically opposite or you know corresponding angles using the same things. Just see if you can use a different angle for help.
What is the status, children? Doing? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. All right, children. Completed, ma'am. Completed? Okay. None children? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what is this theorem? If a transversal, the statement is this, if, the, if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then each pair of, we know this, then each pair of alternate interior angles is equal. Each pair of alternate in, interior angles is equal. OK, so we have this. We have two parallel lines intersected by a transversal. So take two parallel lines, AB parallel to CD intersected by a transversal. And uh, give more description. Uh, where does the transversal meet AB at E? Where does the transversal meet CD at F? And which are the alternate interior angles that you have to prove are equal uh, forming angles 3 and 5 and 4 and 6? So we need to prove that 3 is equal to 5 and 4 is equal to 6. See, the description is very simple. Parallel lines, transversal, AB, uh, transversal meets AB at E, CD at F. Then the alternate interior angles formed are, there are two pairs of alternate interior angles formed, namely this and this, that's all. And we have to prove that they are equal. We'll have to prove that they are equal. So I said to prove that 3 is equal to 5. So this is how the figure looks like. Mark all the angles. So to prove that 3 is equal to 5, just take the help of angle 1. Take the help of angle 1. So see here, angle, so 3 is equal to 5. We need to prove that 3 is equal to 5. So take the help of angle 1. Angle 1 is equal to 3, angle 1 is equal to 5. Why, why is 1 equal to 3? Vertically opposite angles. Why is 1 equal to 5? Corresponding angles. So from comparing these two results, we have 3 is equal to 5. So finish the first one. Then 4 is equal to 6. To prove that 4 is equal to uh, 6, we are taking the help of angle 2. Angle 2. So angle. we need to prove that 4 is equal to 6. Taking the help of angle 2. 2 is equal to 4. 2 is equal to 6. Why is 2 equal to 4? Because vertically opposite angles. Why is 2 equal to 6? Corresponding angles. Now by comparing these two results, we get 4 is equal to 6. So it's a very easy proof. How else can we do it, children? Using the same procedure. So you can also take the help of angle 7. You can also take the help of angle 7. Now, to prove that 3 is equal to 5, you know, to prove that uh, 3 is equal to 5. See here, angle 3 is equal to angle 5. You'll have to prove that 3 is equal to 5. You can also take the help of angle 7. Okay, so why is angle 7 uh, Why is angle seven equal to 5? Vertically opposite angles. Why is 7 equal to 3? Corresponding angles. Same, I told you, the same fashion I told you. I told you it should be in the same fashion. So to prove that, see, I'll write it again. To prove that angle 3 is equal to angle 5, you can also take the help of angle 7. Angle 7. So how do you use angle 7 and prove? Angle 7 is equal to angle 5. Vertically opposite angles are equal. Okay. Angle 7 is equal to angle 3. Why is 7 equal to 3? Corresponding angles are equal. So from these two results, we get angle 3 is equal to angle 5. So instead of one, you can also take seven, angle seven. Next, uh, here we have take, to prove that four is equal to six, to prove that four is equal to uh, six, we have taken the help of angle two. We have taken the help of angle two. You can also take the help of angle eight. You can also take the help of angle eight. Angle eight is equal to angle six. Eight is equal to six. Vertically opposite angles are equal. Angle eight is equal to angle four. Corresponding angles are equal. So, so earlier you took um, uh, you took the help of angle 1 and 2. You can also take the help of 7 and 8. That's all it is. You can take the help of 1 and 2 or you can take the help of 7 and 8. So 8 is equal to 6 vertically opposite angles. And uh, 
Yeah. So angle eight is equal to angle six. Angle eight is equal to angle four. Eight is equal to four corresponding angles. Eight is e equal to six vertically opposite angles. So comparing these results, four is equal to six. Isn't that very simple, children? Yes, All right, very good. Now we'll see the converse of this theorem. That is, if a line intersects, if a line intersects two lines such that a pair of alternate interior angles is equal, then the two lines are parallel to each other. The converse of this one. If a transversal, if a transversal intersects two lines, not two parallel lines. If a transversal intersects two lines such that a pair of one pair of it's enough one pair of alternate interior angles is equal, then the lines are parallel to each other. OK, we'll see that now the converse of theorem one. Converse of theorem one. If a transversal intersects two lines such that a pair of alternate interior angles is equal, then the two lines are parallel to each other. OK, I want you to go through this and uh, explain children. It's very easy again. Right here, go through. You must take two lines, not two parallel lines intersected by a transversal. And mark of any one pair of alternate interior angles equal. That's given one pair of alternate interior angles is equal is given to you. With the help of this, you should prove that the lines are parallel to each other. So to prove that the lines are parallel to each other, we need to use the Converse of corresponding angles axiom. Why? Because only that will help us to prove that the lines are parallel. See here, what is that we get in uh, converse of corresponding angles axiom? Converse of corresponding angles axiom. If a pair of corresponding angles is equal, then the two lines are parallel to each other. So you need to use the you need to take the help of converse of corresponding angles axiom. See here. Yeah, please go through. Please write down children. Go through, write down. I'll just get back in two minutes. Please go through, write down. I'll ask one of you to explain. Write down also children.
done, children? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, good. <clears throat> yeah, go through. Yeah, who wants to explain this? Yeah. It's in the slide. You just have to read and explain that to me. Yes, Sri Jana. Are you there, Sri Jana? Shri Jana? Class, use the emoji. Raise your hand. Optimum, Sandhu, Sanjay, Netra, Madhamita, Danya, Tanishka, and Krishna, Kashvi. All right. Oh, Sri Jana is not there. Oh. Okay. Yeah, who wants to explain? Nobody. Ma'am, can I? Yes, please. Ma'am, uh, in proof it's given uh, angle 3 is equal to angle 5. Okay. So we are writing it and angle 3 is equal to angle 1 because it's vertically opposite angles. Okay. So from uh, 1 and 2 we get angle 1 is equal to angle 5. Okay. Angle 1 and angle 5 form a pair of corresponding angles and the okay. transversal is 3. And AB, lines AB and CD are equal, so AB is parallel to CD. By the converse of corresponding angle, it's axiom. Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. All right, children. So here we have to take up two lines. Two lines. Okay, a transversal intersects two lines such that a pair of alternate interior angles is equal. So these are simply two lines cut by a transversal. You can take any one pair of alternate interior angles to be equal. So here we have taken 3 is equal to 5. You can also take 4 is equal to 6. Take any one pair of alternate interior angles equal. It's given. One pair of alternate interior angles is equal is given. I have taken 3 is equal to 5. You can also take 4 is equal to 6. So what are we given? We are given uh, a transversal T intersects two lines, not parallel lines, two lines A, B and C, D at the points E and F respectively, such that angle 3 is equal to angle 5. One pair of alternate interior angles is equal. Or we need to prove that A, B is parallel to C, D. If a pair of alternate interior angles is equal, then the two lines are parallel to each other is what you'll have to prove. So take up what is given. So you have to prove this using the converse of corresponding angles axiom. OK, so we have angle 3 is equal to angle 5. Take up that angle 3 is equal to angle 5. OK, but angle 3 is equal to angle 1. See, 3 is equal to 5 because it's given. One pair of alternate interior angles is uh, equal is given. But we know that 3 is equal to 1. We know that 3 is equal to 1. Vertically opposite angles are equal. When you compare these two results, we get 5 is equal to 1 or 1 is equal to 5. 1 is equal to 5. Uh, we get a new result. 1 is equal to 5. Now, what can you say about 1 and 5? They are corresponding angles and they are also equal. 1 and 5, they are corresponding angles by the positions here. 1 and 5 are corresponding angles and we have got this result that they are equal. So, one pair of corresponding angles is equal. That result we have got here. So, how do you present that? But angle 1 and angle 5, form a pair of corresponding angles made by the transversal T with the lines A, B and C, D and the corresponding angles are equal and are equal meaning and the corresponding angles are equal. And are equal meaning they are corresponding angles and they are equal. That's what it means. They form a pair of corresponding angles and they are equal. So by the converse of corresponding angles axiom, they are the lines are parallel to each other. Children, I'm just coming.
So I was explaining this one. See here. Uh, let's just remove this. But angle one and five form a pair of uh, corresponding angles. Let's just remove this and understand. Let's just remove this. Now read. But angle one and angle five form a pair of corresponding uh, angles and are equal. Do we understand this? But angle one and angle five form a pair of corresponding angles and are equal. And the corresponding angles are equal because here angle one is equal to angle five. The correspond the one and five are corresponding angles and they are equal. That's what we've written here. Now that in between thing is the explanation. See angle one and angle five form a pair of corresponding angles and are equal. That's the meaning and are equal. The middle thing is more description about the angles made by the transversal T with the lines A, B and C, D. We're just describing how the angles are formed. They're made by the transversal T with the lines A, B and C, D. So these two lines are parallel. So A, B is parallel to C, D. Do you understand how to write that, children? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what you have to write yes. is, but angle one, yeah, what you have to write is, but angle one and angle five form a pair of corresponding angles and are equal. So this middle thing is description about how the angles are formed. The angles are made by the transversal T with the lines A, B and C, D. And the angles are equal. So these two lines A, B and C, D are parallel to each other by the converse of corresponding angles axiom. Because that's what we've used. When uh, you know a pair of corresponding angles is equal, then the lines are parallel to each other. That's what is the corresponding angles axiom. The converse of corresponding angles axiom. See here. When a pair of uh, so here it's mentioned if angle one is equal to angle five or if angle two is equal to six or if four is equal to eight or if three is equal to seven. If any one pair of corresponding angles is equal, then the lines are parallel. That is the converse of corresponding angles axiom. So here we have proved that one is equal to five. We have proved that one pair of corresponding angles is equal. So the lines are parallel to each other. Converse of corresponding angles axiom. So what we have seen now is uh, axiom one and axiom two, uh, where it's about uh, corresponding angles equal, and the second one is when a pair of corresponding angles is equal, then the lines are parallel. That's axiom one and two. Then the uh, first theorem. When a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then each pair of alternate interior angles is equal. If a transversal intersects two lines such that a pair of alternate interior angles is equal, then the lines are parallel to each other, the converse. Now see the third one. It's about co-interior angles, the theorem. If a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then each pair of interior angles on the same side of the transversal is supplementary. If a transversal, if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then each pair of interior angles on the same side of the transversal is supplementary. We have used this result. This is the proof. We know this result. We have used it to solve numerical uh, questions. This is the proof. So what are you given? You are given two parallel lines cut by transversal T. OK, the transversal cuts A, B and C, D, F, E and F respectively. So now you would have understood the description. Forming two pairs of consecutive interior angles, 3 and 6, 4 and 5, 3 and 6, 4 and 5. We need to prove that 3 plus 6 is 180, 4 plus 5 is 180. You should describe it like this, children. There is there nothing. You need not say anything more, but you should not reduce the explanation also. All this must be there. You must describe the figure like this, this figure. OK, so we are given. Uh, two parallel lines intersected by a transversal T. The transversal T meets AB at E and CD at F. And the uh, 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 co-interior angles or the consecutive interior angles formed are angle 3 and angle 6, angle 4 and angle 5. 3 and 6, 4 and 5, 3 and 6, 4 and 5. These are the allied angles or, you know, uh, pairs of consecutive interior angles formed. Or we need to prove that 3 plus 6 is 180, 4 plus 5 is 180. Yeah. It's easy to understand, children. Like the earlier one, you first write down. 
So you will understand and then I'll explain. I'm right here. Please write down. It's very simple. Please write down. Done, children? No, ma'am. Okay. okay. Please let me know when you finish writing. Yes, children. Are we ready? Yes, ma'am. Completely. Yeah. Yes. Very good. So we know the uh, you know the uh, information given in the statement and what we have to prove. I'll just repeat that. So here we are given two parallel lines. The lines are parallel to each other. They are intersected by a transversal. The transversal intersects. One second, children.
So here we are given that the two lines are parallel to each other. They are intersected by a transversal. Uh, the transversal intersects AB at E and CD at F. And we need to prove that uh, co interior angles are supplementary. So which are the pairs of co interior angles? 3 and 6, 4 and 5. So we need to prove that angle 3 plus 6 is 180, angle 4 plus 5 is 180. Now, we need to prove that 3 plus 6 is 180, 3 plus 6 is 180. Now, 3 plus 6 is 180 is what we'll have to prove. So you can start with, since you'll have to prove that 3 plus 6 is 180, start with 3 plus 4 is 180. Why is 3 plus 4 180? Linear per axiom. See, so you know, three. We, we need to prove that 3 plus 6 is 180. 3 plus 6 is 180. Okay, so you start like angle 3 plus angle 4 is equal to 180 linear pair. So now you'll have to prove that 4 is equal to 6. Now you'll have to prove that 4 is equal to 6. If you prove that 4 is equal to 6, then instead of 4, you can replace 6. So you'll get 3 plus 6 is equal to 180. So see here. We start like this. We have to prove that 3 plus 6 is equal to 180. But we know that 3 plus 4 is 180. 3 plus 4 is 180. So that means you must prove that 4 is equal to 6. 4 is equal to 6. So how do you show that 4 is equal to 6? 4 is equal to 6 because they form a pair of alternate interior angles. And we just proved that. See, we, we have just proved the uh, alternate uh, interior angles theorem and its converse. So we're using that alternate interior angles. So they're equal. So 4 is equal to 6 alternate interior angles. Now, instead of 4, use 6. Instead of 4, you use 6. 3 plus 4 is 180, right? But 4 is equal to 6. So the, instead of 4, use 6. So 3 plus 6 is equal to 180. That's what I've written from 1 and 2. That's what I've written from 1 and 2. From 1 and 2. What is that uh, from 1 and 2? So since 4 is equal to 6, here take away 4 and write 6. So you get 3 plus 6 is 180. So we proved this. 3 plus 6 is 180. In the same way, we need to get the result 4 plus 5 is 180. 4 plus 5 is 180, okay? 4 plus 5 is 180. So you can start with 5 plus 6 is equal to 180 or 6 plus 5, 5 plus 6, whatever is 180, linear pair axiom, okay? Now 6 plus 5 is 180 linear pair, but you need to get the result 4 plus 5 is 180. That means you must prove that 6 is equal to 4. Angle 6 is equal to angle 4. And 6 is equal to angle 4 because they form a pair of alternate interior angles and they're equal because the lines are parallel. So the 6 plus, see, we need to get 4 plus 5 children. Uh, we know that 6 plus 5 is 180 linear pair. So 5 is correct. But instead of 6, we should have 4. Now prove that 6 is equal to 4. Yeah, they are equal because alternate interior angles. So from 3 and 4. So since 6 and 4 are equal, take away 6 and write 4. So you get 4 plus 5 is 180. From 3 and 4, from 3 and 4, 4 plus 5 is 180. So hence we prove that uh, co interior angles are supplementary. Next one is the converse of theorem 3. So this is theorem 3. Theorem 4 is the converse of theorem 3. So you can see here theorems uh, are statements which can be proved. So you can see the proof here. So that's what we've been doing all the while. Converse of theorem three. So if a transversal intersects two lines in such a way that a pair of uh, interior angles on the same side of the transversal is supplementary, then the two lines are parallel. If a transversal intersects two lines in such a way that a pair of one pair, that's, a, that's enough, in such a way that one pair of interior angles on the same side of the transversal is supplementary, then the two lines are parallel. So transversal T intersects two lines A, B and C, D at E and F respectively, such that in such a way that one pair of uh, co-interior angles is supplementary. So we have taken 3 plus 6 is 180. You can also take 4 plus 5 is 180. Anything. In such a way that two lines there, there are only two lines A, B and C, D. And in such a way that 3 plus 6 is 180, 3 plus 6 is 180. Then you'll have to prove that A, B is parallel to C, D. A, B is parallel to C, D. Yes, children, please write down. All of you finished writing theorem 3, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma yeah. All of you, children, yeah, please write down this one. That's all. With this, we finish uh, the theorems and axioms.
Please write down, children. Completed now. Allah children. Yes. Completed now. Yes, children. Completed now. Fine. Yeah. So here to prove that two lines are parallel to each other, we need to use the converse of corresponding angles axiom. To prove that two lines are parallel to each other, we need to use the converse of corresponding angles axiom, wherein you will have to show that one pair of corresponding angles is equal. 
So when one pair of corresponding angles is, is equal, then the lines are parallel by the converse of corresponding angles axiom. If you prove that one pair, any one pair of corresponding angles is equal, then by the converse of corresponding angles axiom, the lines are parallel to each other. Okay, so we are given that 3 plus 6 is equal to 180. 3 plus 6 is equal to 180. 3 plus 6 is 180. Okay, so now 2 plus 3 is also 1. See, you should fix the idea first. So you want to show that 2 is equal to 6. You want to show that 2 is equal to 6. One pair of corresponding angles is equal. So you want to show that 2 is equal to 6. So 2 is equal. If you want to show that 2 is equal to 6, one pair of corresponding angles is equal. So 2 is equal to 6. You want to, you want to show this one. So you already know that uh, 3 plus 6 is 180. That's given to you. You already know that 3 plus 6 is equal to 180. That's given to you. Now what you want to prove? 2 is equal to 6, right? 2 is equal to 6. So you should introduce 2 now. So 2 plus 3 is equal to 180. 2 plus 3 is equal to 180. 2 plus 3 is equal to 180. Now 2 plus 3 is 180 linear pair. 3 plus 2 plus 3 is 180 linear pair. 3 plus 6 is 180. Co-interior angles are supplementary is given. Uh, one pair of co-interior angles are supplementary is given. So when you equate these two, because both are equal to 180. So on equating these two, 3 gets cancelled on both the sides. Angle 3 gets cancelled on both the sides and you get angle 2 is equal to angle 6. But angle 2 and angle 6 form a pair of corresponding angles made by the transversal T with the lines A, B and C, D and are equal and the corresponding angles are equal. As I told you, read it like this. But angle 2 and angle 6, but angle 2 and angle 6 form a pair of corresponding angles and are equal. Just read this. But angle 2 and, but angle two and angle 6 form a pair of corresponding angles and are equal. They form a pair of corresponding angles and are equal. This is more description about the angles made by the transversal T with the lines A, B and C, D. And the corresponding angles are equal. Not the lines are equal. The corresponding angles are equal. So the two lines are parallel to each other. So AB is parallel to CD. So AB is parallel to CD. So 3 plus 6 is 180. We know 3 plus 6 is equal to 180. We know. Now 2 plus 3 is equal to 180 linear pair. Linear pair. Now when you equate these two, because both is equal to 180. So that means 2 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 6. 2 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 6 because each of it is equal to 180. So you can equate these two. two that is, uh, what is the, you know, the uh, rule here? The LH, the right hand side is equal to the right hand side. 180, 180. So you can equate the left hand side. 2 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 6. Because the right hand sides are equal. See, 180, 180. These two are equal. So that means even these two should be equal. That means even uh, these two. Uh, that is uh, 2 plus 3 is, should be equal to 3 plus 6. So 3 gets cancelled on both the sides and we have 2 is equal to 6. All right, children? Yes, ma'am. All right, children. Yeah, this is also simple. Please take this also down. It's an example, but meaning I have uh, mentioned as an example, but you you can continue with the theorems. Yes, Chitu. take down this very easy. So we know that we've been using this also. Lines which are parallel to the same line are parallel to each other. We've been using this while, uh, you know, working numerical sums. So this is the proof. Lines which are parallel to the same line are parallel to each other. Please write down.
completed, ma'am. Found it. Completed, ma'am. Found it. Completed, ma'am. Found it, ma'am. Yeah. Completed, ma'am. Found it. Yeah. So, children. <clears throat> Uh, again, you know, these you can uh, decide now such that L is parallel to N and M is parallel to N. So you can even many. Uh, now there are three lines, right? Uh, L, M and N. So you can even say such that L is parallel to M and M is parallel to N. In that case, you'll have to prove that L is parallel to N. If you take three lines such that L is parallel to M. Now these three lines L, M and N such that L is parallel to M and M is parallel to N. Then you have to prove that you will have to prove that L is parallel to N. So that you can change. It's not that you should take this only. It's not that it should be like this. So uh, supposing uh, you have uh, you take, uh, you know, uh, now here it is L, M, right? OK, supposing uh, you can also say uh, you can also prove M is parallel to N. So in that case, you will take L is parallel to M and L is parallel to N. Oh, that's what is here. No, yeah. You can also take it like this. You can also prove M is parallel to N. To prove that, you know, to prove that you can also say M is parallel to N. So for that, you will take. If you have to prove that M is parallel to N, you should take such that L is parallel to M. And L is parallel to N. L is parallel to N. L is parallel to M and L is parallel to N. See, these are the three things, no? L parallel to M, M parallel to N, L parallel to M. Sorry, N. Okay, I think this is easier to explain. Yeah, let me do it like this. L is parallel to M, M is parallel to N, and L is parallel to N. Let me put it like this. Take any two. Then you'll have to prove the third one. I think this is easier. Take any two as given. Then you'll have to prove the third one. So here I have taken L parallel to N and M parallel to N, these two. So we have to I have to prove that L is parallel to M. Take any two as given. And the third one you'll have to prove. I'll write it again. Supposing A, B, C. Supposing you call the lines A, B, and C. A, B, and C. So what are the three things you have? A parallel to B, B parallel to C, A parallel to C. So if you say uh, given B is parallel to C and A is parallel to C, then you must prove that A is parallel to B. Take any two as given. The third one you have to prove. I hope it's clear to all of you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. All right, children. So here, this is what we have taken uh, is given, and uh, this is what you'll have to prove. So it's very simple. Maybe uh, I've written a lot in words here. I should have used symbols. I'll correct this slide, meaning it's not wrong. I've used a lot of words now. I feel it's a simple proof, but it looks like as if there's a lot in this. So let me write it now using symbols. Now we know that L is parallel. We'll take up this first children. L is parallel to N. L is parallel to N. Intersected by a transversality and all that is there. Okay. If L is parallel to N, L is parallel to N. So see only those lines. Don't see this line. Don't see this line. Okay. This is not there. L is parallel to N. So clearly angle 1 is equal to angle 3. Corresponding angles are equal. Correct. 1 is equal to 3. Corresponding angles are equal. So since angle, uh, sorry, L is parallel to N, angle 1 is equal to angle 3. Corresponding angles are equal. Then M is parallel to N is given. M is parallel to N is given. M and N, these two lines are parallel. So don't see this line. Don't see this line. M is parallel to N. So clearly angle 2 is equal to angle 3. Corresponding angles are equal. 2 is equal to 3. Corresponding angles are equal. Now when you compare these two results, when you compare these two results, 1 is equal to 3, 2 is equal to 3. That means 1 is equal to 2. That means 1 is equal to 2. But angle 1 and 2. See, we have got this result 1 is equal to 2. We have proved this result 1 is equal to 2. 1 is equal to 2, we have proved. But angle 1 and 2, they form a pair of corresponding angles made by the transversal T with the lines L and M. 
and are equal and the corresponding angles are equal. So by the converse of corresponding angles axiom, L is parallel to M. L is parallel to M. So that's all the proof is children. We have taken three lines L, M and N. You can say A, B, C such that I told you you can write three things. Take any two and write that you will have to prove the third one. So that also I told you you'll have to take three lines. <coughs> then. Construction uh, take a transversal because uh, when the, there are three parallel lines, a transversal is very important. Only then you can see the angles. So take a transversal cutting all this. You understand cutting the lines at these points E, F and G. The transversal T cutting the uh, lines L, M and N at E, F and G respectively. OK, so again uh, I repeat. L parallel to N, L is parallel to N. So if L is parallel to N, L is parallel to N, angle 1 is equal to angle 3, corresponding angles are equal. The lines are parallel, so corresponding angles are equal. Then M is parallel to N, M is parallel to N. So since M is parallel to N, see here angle 2 is equal to angle 3, corresponding angles are equal. Because the lines are parallel, corresponding angles are equal. So now with these two parallel lines, we have written two results. Now compare these two results. What do you get? Angle 1 is equal to angle 2. We get a new result. Angle 1 is equal to angle 2. 1 and 2 are equal. Angle 1 is equal to angle 2. But 1 and 2 form a pair of corresponding angles by the position. Whether the lines are parallel or not parallel. By the position, they are corresponding angles. 1 and 2. But angle 1, we have got the result. Angle 1 is equal to angle 2. They are equal. But angle 1 and angle 2 are corresponding angles made by the transversal T. With the lines L and M and the corresponding angles are equal. So the lines are parallel to each other. So L is parallel to M. So L is parallel to M. Since a pair of corresponding angles is equal, the lines are parallel to each other. Converse of corresponding angles axiom. Am I clear, children? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, that's what I made it very complicated. I think this one I should uh, change. So that parallel, I've written it in words instead of using the symbols. So that's what I've written here. Parallel lines L and N intersected by a transversal T at these points. So, so it's just that, uh, you know, I've mentioned L is parallel to N and T is a transversal. That's all. L is parallel to N, this one. This L is parallel to N and T is a transversal. Angle 1 is equal to angle 3. Then the next one, M is parallel to N. That's all it is here. M is parallel to N. And T is the transversal. So corresponding angles are equal. Then comparing these two, there is three here, there is three here. So comparing these two, one is equal to two. One is equal to two. But they form a, form a pair of corresponding angles, blah, blah, blah. You know all that. So the lines are parallel to each other. Yeah, children. So that's all this is. Uh, another important uh, result. If a line is perpendicular, to one of the two given parallel lines, then prove that it is also perpendicular to the other line. So that means there are two parallel lines. There are two parallel lines and there is a line which is perpendicular to one of these two lines. You should prove that it's also perpendicular to the other line. I'll repeat. There are two parallel lines. There are two parallel lines. There is another line. There is another line like this, and this line is perpendicular to say this first line. You should prove that this line is also perpendicular to the second line. If a line is if a line is this one, this is the line. If a line is perpendicular to one of the two given parallel lines. So if this line is per, now these two lines are parallel. M is parallel to N. If this line L is perpendicular to M, you should prove that L is also perpendicular to N. OK, so that is simple because the two lines are parallel. The two lines are parallel. Now perpendicular means this is 90 degrees. The two lines are parallel. That means corresponding angles are equal. So angle 1 is equal to angle 2. Angle 1 is 90 degrees, so 2 is also 90 degrees. That means L is also perpendicular to N. Please write down children. I just made it very short. Let me see if you have any questions. Uh, we'll uh, discuss. Please write down this one.
Okay, so here we are given that M is parallel to M is parallel to N. And this line L is perpendicular to M. That means it makes a right angle 90 degrees with M. You must prove that L is also perpendicular to N. So the proof is. Since uh, this line L is per perpendicular to M, it means angle one is 90 degrees. Now. M is parallel to N and L is the transversal. Angle 2 is equal to angle 1. Corresponding angles are equal. But what is the measure of angle 1? 90 degrees. 1 is 90. 2 is equal to 1. That means 2 is equal to 90 because 2, and 2 is equal to 1. What is 1? 90 degrees. So 2 is equal to 90 degrees. So if angle 2 is equal to 90 degrees, it means L is perpendicular to N. If two, this the measure of angle two is 90 degrees, it means L is perpendicular to N. Finish children. Yes, yes. Yes. All right. Yeah, please uh, write out these by the next class, children. Take down this one. Take a screenshot. Finish it now itself, children, meaning after the meeting, you know, please complete it. You will forget otherwise. Just two proofs. This one, take a screenshot, complete this in your book. We'll discuss in the next class. This and yeah, yeah very good. And this one, that's all. Only these two. Very good. That's all. I think, yeah, these will do in the class. All right, children. All right, children. So that's it for today's session. Thank you so much. You may leave the call. Thank you. Thank you, children. Thank you. 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 Thank you.